All right, our, uh, our first speakers are Sam Hatoum, Mike Rissi, and Robert Dickert. Uh, you've heard Sam speak before at DevShop on test-driven development, and Mike Rissi about MatEye, and Robert Dickert will be giving another talk later today about Meteor Boulder. Um, together, they uh, and a whole bunch of other really awesome folks uh, worked on pulled together Velocity, which is the unified testing framework for Meteor. Without further ado, Mike, Robert, and Sam. Okay, so I'm Sam from Zolvio. I'm Robert Dickert from Meteor Boulder. I'm Mike Rissi from MadEye. And we're here to talk to you about Velocity, which, uh, as Jade said, is the unified testing framework. And we're also happy to say that it's the uh, officially supported testing framework for Meteor for 1.0. Woo! Mm -hmm. So, the Velocity team came together as a result of an online meetup that happened uh, with a joint effort of Meteor Boulder, Meteor Denver, Meteor Cincinnati, and Meteor Seattle. Now, prior to that, there was a bunch of frameworks. There was RTD, there was Laker, there was MochaWeb, and all of them did different things and did them very well, but there was nothing that did them all together nicely. So um, when we got together, we said, why not just put our heads together and make something for the whole community? And uh, Velocity was born. So Meteor makes it really easy to build interesting, reactive, responsive apps but it doesn't necessarily make it that easy to test them. So what have been some of the difficulties? So really the fundamental difficulty that you run into when you're testing Meteor apps is that Meteor doesn't have a testing environment. You have your uh, dev environment and you have production. Um, so you're basically left with two choices. Um, you can run tests inside of a Meteor app or you can run them outside of a Meteor app. Um, now, if you run them outside, you have to do a lot of fancy stuff around stubbing uh, the, the different Meteor methods. Um, and if you run it inside, you have to be very careful that it doesn't leak into your main application and it's running in an isolated environment. Um, both of those are challenging things to get right, and those are some of the primary things that Velocity is solving. So the way we solve that is by basically creating a mirror application. Um, so for some frameworks like MochaWeb, they have their own mirrored application that's the same as the Meteor application, but it's a complete mirror running with its own database, and that runs in a separate environment. That can be destructive with the data. It can run, and once it's finished, um, it comes back to velocity. Now, some other frameworks like Jasmine Unit don't need a full environment, so we don't give them a mirror. So it's down to the framework to select whether it wants a mirror or not, and velocity supplies mirrors. So in, in the past, uh, when you wanted to install, we, you know, we've had some uh, testing frameworks like RTD, Leica, uh, MochaWeb, and some of the difficulty you have installing it is that you may have to, to use NPM to install it. Sometimes it has dependencies that it have to load. Sometimes they don't load correctly. And there's, there can be a lot of trouble just getting the thing to work correctly. So, the way Velocity solves this is by making it a smart package, just MRT add Velocity. <laughs> so Robert's about to do a demo here, and uh, the demo of the app is basically going to be an app where these packages are added. So you'll see Velocity, a couple of test <coughs> frameworks, and a reporter. Okay. So uh, I wrote this really cool app. And uh, yeah, I know, you, you recognize it, don't you? Um, now there's one little difference here. It has this little green dot up here. Uh, I'm gonna pull up some code. I, know it's, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this is just some of the test code. And um, it so happens that uh, I think it'd be a really good idea to uncomment, uncomment this line, which is gonna break my test. So I'm gonna hit save. Oh, turned red. Huh. Oh, and it's doing a little flashy thing. So I, I think uh, I better take a look at that. I'm going to click on that circle. And here is the velocity overlay. OK, so here it is. Uh, so this is the overall result, 24 out of 25 passed. Looks like we have a problem in Jasmine unit. Uh, and you can see that 7 out of 8 passed. And here's uh, the stack trace from that. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out how to fix that. I suspect that if I did that, uh, it'll <laughs> probably work. So uh, I'm going to hit save, and lo and behold, it reactively goes back. Um, you can also make it so it shows all of your passing tests, so it nicely formats 
all of your stuff. Um, it's also, it also happens to be reactive, so, or responsive, excuse me. So if you, make it, if you have to make it small because you're working on a small laptop, it'll, it'll crush down for you. And uh, you can use it on your phone. <laughs> so, uh, so there it is. Let's go back in the presentation. All right, so we saw the first feature here was the unified reactive in-app reporting tool. Now the other thing, there was Jasmine unit and there's Mocha web, and what happens is Velocity runs these in parallel, and they run all their tests and come back out. So basically, it's very fast. You, you don't get sequential uh, running, and if the more frameworks you add, the more they'll run in parallel. And in the future, we're hoping to add it so that each framework can actually run parallel tests itself. So speed is key. And again, these are all smart packages, so they run native to Meteor. They know all the Meteor dependencies. Uh, they should play nice with your apps. Uh, and I just wanted to note quickly like that uh, CI is just going to be another uh, reporter. So just as you saw the HTML reporter, now there's going to be another reporter, which is continuous integration. So Velocity is more of a community than it is just uh, a, frame, a running framework. It's, um, uh, everything is made so that it's reusable by other test frameworks. So for example, the mirroring, all frameworks can get that for free from Velocity Core. Um, there's also um, automatic stubbing that happens. So it's, it's a big pain to stub uh, Meteor code. And so we've got a package that um, goes into your packages, scans them, creates a mock for all of them, and puts that into your test directory. Um, so that can actually be used by other frameworks as well. So today we have Jasmine unit, but somebody might come and do Mocha unit or some other unit, and when that happens, they can also reuse the auto stubbing. Um, yeah, that was it. All right. So one of the things I wanted to mention here is that uh, as your app grows, like you need different kinds of tests. Uh, maybe when you're starting out, you just want to hack something together and have uh, a few Mocha web tests. But once you uh, are serving an enterprise level app, you're going to need some end-to-end -end tests. And we don't have Nightwatch today, but that is coming soon. Um, but the main thing is that you're able to use lots of different testing frameworks in one app, have one reporter, and they all play nice together. So uh, how does Velocity work? Um, to me, when I'm thinking about Velocity, I almost think of it less as code, more of a common interface that everything shares. So, all of the different testing frameworks have a common way of reporting test results, and all of the test reports have a common way of consuming uh, these test results from Velocity. And uh, Sam can speak to that a little bit better on the next diagram. Yeah, everything's, everything's a package, and uh, it's, all, it's all reactive. So this is how Velocity works, uh, conceptually. So Velocity's in the middle. On the, uh, that side, uh, you've got the, your normal app code, and you've got your test code. So the first thing that Velocity does is it watches your app code and also watches your test directory. As soon as there's a change, then what it does is it distributes your tests to the correct framework, and that framework would run those tests. It finishes, it returns the results, and then Velocity will publish those results to the various reporters. And everything here is a package. Um, so um, as we were saying, you saw the in-app HTML reporter. The console reporter is useful for you know, just seeing it from the console. And of course, we can have things like XUnit reporters that will allow it to integrate very easily with continuous integration servers, because most of them use XUnit. Um, so when can you use it? Um, you can use it today, but be very careful. Um, we were working up until the last minute uh, getting this ready for the demo. So. I can confidently say that many bugs will be encountered by many people. Um, but we want your feedback, so do try it out and let us know how it works for you. So what's next? Um, we've mentioned continuous integration support. What's really cool is that the Meteor Development Group have um, said that this is going to be the official framework for testing for 1.0. And so we're going to see things like tighter integration with the Meteor commands. We'll be able to do Meteor test, and that will run your tests. So Velocity itself will disappear, and it will become integrated. There's a bit more like medium term, but like in the immediate, you can actually start using this, knowing that it's the framework that's, gonna, that's got the full support. Um, we mentioned that Selenium uh, Nightwatch is going to be in there, and you know that's really cool. It allows you to test on a variety of browsers locally. Uh, it's a it's an industry standard tool as well as Cucumber JS. Um, so we're writing those like you know imminently. And um, something from RTD that we used to do was uh, test coverage, um, and so the code would be instrumented. And after you've run your tests, you get a report of where you've got coverage. So that's coming soon. 
And uh, the one I'm really excited about is distributed parallel testing. So to basically start up some cloud helpers, and then they'll do the testing for you for things like Selenium, which are really slow, and they'll come back and give you a, 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 sync, a report quickly. It's all about speed, basically, so hence the name, Velocity. So if you want to get involved, what can you do? Well, the best thing you can do is try it out and report bugs. Tell us what features you want, what's missing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff still to come on it. So we'd really love your feedback. If you would like to get involved with the team, there is a Velocity Core Google group. And uh, you can check that out and uh, talk to us there. And we'd be happy to discuss that with you. And the uh, bit.ly link that you see right here, uh, that's the slides that you're looking at right now if you want to look at the stack for whatever reason. And, and again, a special thanks to our, our team members who aren't here, Adrian, Abigail, Rye, Josh, Ronan, Greg. You guys are awesome. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions from the audience? Yuri, go ahead. Can you, can you run tests like for content in different browsers? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as soon as we do Cucumber, oh, sorry. Good question. The question was, <laughs> can you run front end tests in different browsers? Uh, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, so the answer is yes. Um, uh, as soon as we have the Selenium uh, support, for example, with Nightwatch, it's down to the framework to say what it wants to support. And we know that Nightwatch allows you to run on source labs and browser stacks, so you can run across all the browsers. And also, you can install all the browsers locally and test, it, test your app on mobiles also. I have one. How long ago did Velocity start as an initiative? You know, the, the meetup where we all had that discussion was on April 1st. And uh, yeah, we had that talk. I think Sam talked to me like the next day and said, man, this is great. We should continue this discussion without an audience and see what we can do. And so uh, yeah, you know, and I talked to everyone. Uh, I think every single person I talked to said yes. And we acquired a couple more, like, uh, like Abigail and Greg. Um, so yeah, it was really an incredible community initiative that started just as a matter of discussion between people and turned into Velocity. Yeah, that same night, I went, to, uh, uh, I went to say, well, I haven't got much time. I've got too much on my plate right now. And then that same night, I went and coded like the first slice of it and said, right, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> So if I install it, it, it it's not going to add anything to the, to the production app, or, or does it? Uh, repeat the question. If I install Velocity, it's not going to add anything to the production app. Um, not completely. It will add a little bit, but a very small amount. Um, we've taken like, great pains to make sure that uh, test files are not added into the, uh, the production bundle. That said, there's going to be a small piece of uh, like the Velocity framework that is shipped out to production right now. Uh, there currently is no way to like mark a package in Meteor as like a test-only package. Um, once you're able to do that, then we'll be able to say like there's absolutely nothing being shipped out to production. But until then, sort of the best we can do is say there's a very small number of tiny files that will go out to production. But you can remove those before you go to production. If you just say remove That's packages, true. then they then they won't be. Um, and the other thing is, you know, the support from the uh, Meteor Development Group is, is promised, so hopefully that won't be very long. There was another question. Just now. Hey, does this replace tiny tests, or are we, uh, can you, you can test packages with this, obviously? So the question is, does it replace tiny test? The answer is no. Tiny test is for testing all the packages. Of course, you can build an app out of packages, and you can use tiny tests to test all of those. This is for testing your application code. So one thing to add there is that somebody we've been working with, Ronan, uh, he's actually, uh, they've written a, a framework called MUnit, which sits on top of uh, um, tiny, test. tiny test and uh, provides things like assertion libraries and what have you on top. Um, we've been talking about how to integrate that, and it is possible to get that to run alongside all the other frameworks with Velocity. So we should be able to get it in there. So you can test that. Uh, you could test them with uh, both Mocha Web and Jasmine Unit today. Not quite the same as like uh, Tiny Test does it, um, but you know it shouldn't be too long before we get M Unit in there. But straight out the box, like M like uh, Tiny Test, not right now. But you can run them alongside each other. That works.
Any other questions? Um, is there some kind of uh, like a test framework that you envision for kind of setting up factories or like kind of fake uh, fake populations of data alongside your tests? Um, yeah, so uh, you're talking about fixtures, being yeah. able to fix data. So when you run a mirror app, uh, one of the things that a framework can do is run a pre-step, pre uh, so prior to the app running. And in there, you can do things like copy fixture code in. And so this is something we used to do with RTD, and it's definitely going to make it into here. So in that, you can basically get, uh, for example, if you're running Selenium, you could call an endpoint and say, I want to set up five players. And after those are set up, you can run your test. So you can go through the setup, execute, verify. Yeah. You said earlier that uh, Velocity goes in and creates mocks for like, everything uh, in advance. Um, how do I access that? How, how will I know how to refer to that? So Jasmine Unit is the framework that does that because it's a unit testing framework and it runs uh, outside of a mirror. So Meteor doesn't actually load up at all. What happens is it's just loading plain old JavaScript um, um, files. And so what it does is it first has a Meteor stub that we've built and that sort of pretends that all the Meteor functions are there so that the, app, the code can at least load. Now if you have a dependency on some package, that code's not going to load. So the auto stubber, it takes a first attempt at trying to just generate empty functions for everything that's in the package you've generated, you've, you've referenced. If it doesn't work, it will give you a message saying, I couldn't stub this automatically, uh, but these are the things you have to stub before you can run unit tests. And then you can go off and stub those like minimally, um, and then um, feel free to submit those, and we can put them in, the in a repo, and then everybody else can get access to those as well. Yeah. Thank you guys.